Hello, hello, and welcome to Season 6, Episode 14 of the OdaFest Podcast. This is Angelo, along with Nancy and Jay. Hello. Here for you on this blessed Wednesday. How? <laughs> How are you two doing today? The wind kept me up all night, so I'm like bleary and half asleep right now. Yes, we are recording this on Sunday, and anybody here in Calgary will know it's windy and snowy as hell. It's not windy hey. downtown, but it it's is a very bit windy. Snow. It's a bit. It's snow. very windy here, and we're not even that far away from downtown. No, no, you are not. It it sometimes feels or sounds like our house is going to get torn apart by the wind. Oof. That's insane. It is uh, pretty intense. But you are up. Then. There are some gusts out there. Yeah, you're it's up like on the hill, though. all over the world. Like, you're up west a bit, so you're up on the hill, so you're a bit more Do you have a lot there. of trees to block the wind? We do, actually. Like, big the old thing trees? Is, the wind is coming from the other direction. Wrecked. Aww. Like, we've got, a, we've got a tree above and... Or, above... Uh, in front oh and my God. behind the house. The sky tree. <laughs> the sky tree. Yeah. And, uh, but it's coming from like a, a north direction, it looks mm, like, mm, if mm. I had to say. The wind is coming from the north. Mm. So like, there's another house beside us, but it's only a one story house. So like the second story of this house is all getting blasted. Mm. Blasted. Anyways, I started blasted. blasted. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure I so didn't sleep blasting. any solid amount this like last night because I think I woke up like every half an hour due to noises and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh no. Eh, it's all right. That's what coffee's for. Yes, coffee is the nectar of the gods, the bean gods. No, soy milk is the nectar of the bean gods. That's why you call it bean milk. It's the good stuff. No. Yes. No, because soy milk. Soy milk is an imposter. No. It is not milk. It is juice. This is true. That's fair. Is it, is it is definitely not a proper mammalian description of milk. There is no soy nipple. Therefore, there is no <laughs> soy milk. It is soy juice. Show me the nugget. I'm not nugget. saying that soy <laughs> juice is wrong. I'm just saying. Market it, it is, as soy it juice. It is an imposter. Show me, show imposter. me the nugget on this chicken. I would like to see its nuggets. <laughs> oh my. Oh, oh, oh my. my. Are you suggesting for a moment that le lait de poulet uh, is milked from the chickens? It's true. <laughs> yes. Okay. I understand. Mm -hmm. I understand. But on the, on the topic of imposters, so right at the end of last week's episode, Nancy mentioned one thing that just blew my mind. On the last episode of the OdaFest podcast. Odafest Podcast Z. <laughs> uh, Nancy, you want to get into it? I, okay. So this was a concept that was introduced to me not even that long ago, but apparently we have something like ghost, ghost kitchens. And you guys know what ghost kitchens are. Um, they're just kitchens that you can order from, they'll deliver to you. Sometimes you can go pick up, but basically they just don't have anywhere for you to sit. And this is basically a ghost ch kitchen that... You almost said chicken. I, I did. I almost said chicken because you guys were talking about ghost nuggets. Ghost chicken. Ghost chickens. Uh, this is basically a series of kitchens pretending to be part of the Chicago deep dish chain Empire. in Calgary. Impostering, impostering. That is a terrible word. Uh, I am poster. Imposter. Um, so basically, what happens is they have managed to copy all of the branding and all of the advertisements from the Chicago deep dish chain from like the nineties, I think. So they've taken uh, it and they've 80s, replaced. Apparently. Sorry. Anywhere from the late 80s up to the 2000s. Again, yeah. apparently that branding was all just... There Not was no trademarked. copyright attached to it or something. Not And the, the name of the, of the actual restaurant is also not trademarked for some reason. And so to, to basically borrow 
slash steal their marketing, their branding, their like ad presence anywhere. They just operate and pretend they're part of the chain. So if you call in to one of these places claiming to be Chicago Deep Dish and you order pizza delivered, they will deliver to you a a fake Chicago deep dish pizza. I mean, okay, um, the pizza's real, first of all. Angelo's so it's had not, it several times. Sure. <laughs> it's it's not fake in that it's not a physical item. It's yep. fake in that it wasn't created by the actual chain, the, the actual restaurant, Chicago yes. Deep Dish. Yes. These are people who are claiming to be part of it. So what happened, uh, how they got found out was that someone called in and decided, you know what, I'm going to do a pickup. And because they said it was a pickup order, their phone call got routed to the real Chicago Deep Dish. And then when they went to go pick up, they realized this pizza tastes nothing like the ones they've ordered prior. And that's that's what that's what caused all of this to, to come up. Is Maybe that they, they, they found got out a new it. pizza chef. You don't know. So what they happened was <laughs> uh, the owner's son chimed in on a Reddit thread and said, hey, I was the guy on the phone with you when this happened. I can explain a bit more. So he kind of goes into the history of how this was established back in the 80s. But because of trademarking and copywriting issues, the name of the store was never actually trademarked or copyrighted. And so these these places that do delivery, only delivery, have popped up claiming to be part right. of the chain. Right. And then if you call into them and you're like, oh, I want to do a pickup or, or something like that, they just They'll like forward to, you along as if right. it was just as if they it was part of the They have to reroute chain. you back to the actual restaurant franchise. The yeah. real one. Yeah. Exactly. So um, they've the the only thing that they've really been able to do was they've upgraded their branding. They've changed it in such a way so that the phone number is very very prominent. But you know Photoshop can take care of that pretty quickly if you know what you're doing. So they just try to make it very clear this is the real phone number. Our actual restaurants operate under this phone number. If you're calling a different one, it's not us. Yes. So. It goes even deeper than that, though. Uh, deeper dish than that, you mean? Mm. When I when I <laughs> first moved out to Alberta a decade ago, I lived down the street from a Chicago deep dish place. Uh, this was in Okotoks. Mm -hmm. Apparently, they've never had locations in Okotoks. <laughs> they have not. So uh. that is that was like the Chicago deep dish that I like. I was like, okay, this is pretty good, and so I was like attached to that like place that that was the flavor profile that i was kind of expecting and now it's part of your childhood memories no it's not because i was 20 like <laughs> okay fine at the it time. was part of your formative years but so about a month ago i ordered from chicago deep dish on uh on skip the dishes right was it the real one and so here's the thing it was a different bootleg chicago deep dish how many are I, there i didn't i didn't think about this i didn't even think about this until we started reading these articles like to to inform myself on the topic and i was like wait a minute was was the chicago deep dish that i ordered fake and yes it was and like it wasn't a bad pizza it's just it wasn't what i was expecting interesting so you went from one imposter to another yes Yes, and now that I think about it, I've had Chicago Deep Dish, like, in Calgary three, maybe four times <laughs> over the last, like, five He's years. He's been Were scammed any of them four real? times. I don't know if I've ever had the real Chicago Deep Dish. Does this make you want to order a real one now just to try it out? Yes. Like, I legitimately have to go and see, like, what is the actual Chicago Deep Dish? What... What what have I been missing? What Be right is back going, ordering. What is going <laughs> on here? I also want to point Angela. out, so I, I have a theory here as to why all of this, I, I wouldn't say was allowed to happen, but in a sense, like, How happened it because, yeah, it's probably because, so Chicago Deep Dish is a style of food. Right, it's a yes. style of pizza. It absolutely is. It's probably pizza very casserole, difficult to copyright. Right? And it's well, and the other thing is, the Chicago deep dish pizza 
is nothing like what Chicago. No, Deep Dish it's like a casserole. Actually, sells. It's, it's like a it's like a three or four is. inch casserole. Like it's deep AF. It's pizza cake. <laughs> you know, you get you don't get slices. You get a slice of the pizza, and it's like lasagna of pizza. But the thing is, I would even though we're in Calgary and far away from Illinois, I think that because it's a distinct style in the same way that you don't have a hamburger shop called like American hamburger or like some kind of weird, like illusion, illusion to like the actual food style. I don't know if you're allowed to, to trademark or copyright it, even if you're a business whose title is this, like I, it's, it's, I don't know for sure, but it's definitely my big guess. And that's also why it's probably been as like messed up as the real question is, why don't they just change their name so that they could copy? Like, I feel like because that's they, probably the they only lose thing. years of branding, literally what branding? branding everyone's using it. <laughs> that's what's crazy about it. Like, apparently the branding now is fairly different, mm-hmm. but they center it more around their phone number because that is the only way to know you're contacting the real people. Right. But so like wild. I said, Photoshop fixes that pretty quickly. It's wild. But, uh, the, the difference there being, mm-hmm. what probably happened was when they were starting out as a small business, they probably couldn't afford to enforce any kind of uh, trademark disputes. Right. And the issue with trademark specifically is if you do not take steps to enforce your trademark, true. you do legally lose the right to it. It's true. Yeah. And, yes. and really, that's all you can do right now is you'd have to take legal action against every single one of them. No, but Angelo, but what Angelo is saying is that it's gone on too long, so they can no yeah, longer do that. Yeah, it set that precedent now. It's, it, yeah. So let's say they opened the restaurant in 1987. Uh, they were using that same branding up until the early 2000s. Uh, in that amount of time, like that could have been minimum 13 years possibly as much as 15 maybe closer to 20 by the time things were found out that they had basically not done anything that they just allowed it to happen Mm -hmm. uh they may no longer have any kind of standing to go on Mm -hmm. and so like i actually used google street view to check on the the restaurant that apparently i ordered chicago deep dish from off uh off skip the dishes Uh and it is that deep fried like big deep uh, deep red block letters mm-hmm. on a freaking yellow background that I remember from the same one in Okotoks. Yeah, that's that the matches, old branding. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That matches their old branding. Yep. Now, the thing is, they're not just using the name, though. They're using they're their using branding the materials. They're using the same menus. Yeah. They're using their same menus. They're using their here's, same box design. Here's the thing. Yep. Like, like, the box design stuff is kind of like sort of agree but you have to go through the pain of like actually like trademarking a bunch of that stuff like you it's actually a much more involved process it's not just you create a business and you create some branding and you automatically have the rights to it mm-hmm. is copying a menu even like illegal oh absolutely like uh yes menus can be copyrighted but I mean, isn't it super fishy how they literally just ripped off? Like, it's not like someone went and retyped the whole thing up. It Like, they just replaced a phone number on the exact same menu. It looks photocopied. It's not just that, though. Like, I want to, like, on the menu thing, it's not like, okay. So, for example, I know that McDonald's, like, for example, the McDonald's has the Big Mac, right? In somewhere in the UK about, I want to say roughly five years ago, they accidentally forgot to renew their uh, license for the big for the Big Mac name somewhere somewhere in Europe. Uh, I, I said UK, but it's I know it's somewhere in Europe, so we're gonna stick with that. Didn't so someone somebody open took a new restaurant. Someone called no, Big someone, Mac. No, but someone uh, like uh, another restaurant. Like I think it was a a, a small restaurant took the Big Mac trademark. Because they, they, they registered it after it expired. And they were legally allowed to do that. Now, that's one thing because that's an item. But you can't... If if you have two competing hamburger restaurants, for example, hamburger, fast food restaurants, and it's a, the menu, menu A says hamburger, cheeseburger, soft drink, and the other one says hamburger, cheeseburger, soft drink, that's not copying the menu. That's just 
exactly what you're serving. I don't like. I don't necessarily have a problem with quote unquote the menu it copy depends, if there's no basically. if there's no item that sets up itself apart from the normal. Uh, uh, so I can't argue convention. about European trademark law. No, but it's the it's the uh, naming convention. I'm only vaguely about. familiar with even Canadian trademark law. But the thing about trademarks in Canada, at the very least, and probably the U.S., you don't have to register them. Registering your trademark makes it easier later on down the line if litigation does have to happen. Right. But you do not have to register your trademark. Mm. Your trademark, as long as it is unique, it is within your uh, industry, mm -hmm. unique within your industry, I should say. And as long as you are actively using it, you retain the full rights to that trade. But that's exactly what I'm saying is that that menu at the very least is not unique to the industry. It's just so a let's style say, of pizza. Let's say two pizza places, two pizza places had a pizza yeah. that was basically an everything pizza. It had all the toppings. It had the pepperoni, right? that's the, called ham, the, deluxe. The, the green peppers. You could call it the deluxe. Sure. But what if uh, Chicago Deep Dish called that the Mr. Universe pizza? Right. That's what I was going to get to. But they what did. if the you bootlegger specifically also name... called it the Mr. Universe pizza? That is absolutely a trademark violation. Absolutely. But do, do they yeah. have that? Because to my yes. knowledge, I like I thought they only had like They've got a great pizza, pizza that names. they call the Zeus. Uh-huh. Ah, okay. There Who we go. Who the hell else, what other pizza place is going to call their pizza the Zeus? Fair enough. Well, all these, all these imposters, apparently. All these imposters do it. Their menus are literally say it's not like saying this place says hot dog, this other place says hot dog. No. That this would be like if one place called their hot dog the fucking atomic uh atomic gut buster and gut it has a, an ingredients list on the menu because why wouldn't it so people know what they're buying when they buy the atomic gut buster mm -hmm. and then another completely See, different hot dog place came up and said yes yeah. this is our hot dog the atomic gut buster and here's the ingredients list and it is the exact same i'm i'm in i'm in agreement with that my understanding was that there wasn't that many unique names it was like you know no. how like uh every one of their pizzas almost has a unique name i think like name. canadian mm. pizza unlimited i'm sure they have some unique names but most of theirs is just like the description of what's on the pizza like you have the deluxe yeah, you have like, a pepperoni you have a whatever but like if you say a canadian pizza or like a montreal pizza mm -hmm. or or a triple crown like those are very specific kinds of pizzas but they're... and that's not a registered name but those are that's also generic a name that yes. anyone understands yeah. But if I told you, hey, do you want a the Zeus pizza? I'm like, what other what fucking do you mean pizza by that? place other than Chicago Deep Dish is going to know what that is? That's like a very specific menu item. It's true. So outside of things like copywriting menus and branding materials, these kitchens can also pretty much just function with impunity because if they piss off a customer, it wasn't actually their customer. Right. Yeah. If if you call them up and say, hey, That's this true. pizza, you made it wrong. And, you know, they tell you, well, too bad, you're lost. You know, this this branding is now what you've associated with. Like, well, they pissed me off if you didn't know. Yes. And my God, this is <laughs> so ridiculous. Angel, you do and, know and what so you have to do, though, right? I have to go to the you real. You have place. to go to a real That's one it. and you have to tell us Remember, how it is. On you the have next to one. get you have to get the pickup. I know it's tough, but you have to venture out into the great Canadian north, and you must hunt for your pizza. I must hunt for my pizza. <laughs> I must go, go to go the, the long-forgotten pizza stand, yes. the pizzeria, and and hunt my own pie. If you if you do that, when you pick it up, are you gonna are you gonna mention about the whole fake thing? Or are you just gonna go in there and pick it up? <laughs> I'm just going to go in and pick yeah. it up because I don't want to get into a conversation no. about how I've literally never had the real thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's that's going to be such a time because you're just you're basically coming head to head with what you remember right. this was supposed to be. And and here's the other thing. What happens if you don't like it? <laughs> oh dear. There's I mean, every maybe. opportunity that you might not. I mean, maybe. But it could happen. But, but I mean, the last time I bought it, I didn't like it. <laughs> well, the last time you got it, it wasn't real. Exactly. It was real. So just like, not there. We'll see what happens. I'll just go back to making my own pizzas from scratch, obviously. All right. Before. Obviously. <laughs> I think I, I, th I think we've gone on about this bootleg <laughs> imposter pizza. Yeah. Too long. But I don't know. It was a, it was a bit high. of a 
It was but a bit of a mind bender. If anyone else has had experience with this, uh, let us know. But uh, please, I want to hear this. It's 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 been interesting. Uh, before we actually get in too far as well, uh, I want to just give a quick shout out. Actually, um, unrelated, but also amazing stuff. Um, some of people here may know of a streamer named Slurpy Ninja, or also commonly known as Dave in the Calgary community, who is Dave. a speedrunner. We love Dave. Dave is a good guy. We do love Dave. Um, by the time you are hearing this, as the episode will have released, the uh, the stream will have been finished, but there will be plenty of videos on demand on the channel, which is twitch.tv slash Slurpy Ninja. And what's happening there, you might ask? Well, it's actually Slurpathon right now. It's the third and final day. They have blasted through their initial goal of 3,000 USD, raising money through Extra Life for the Alberta Children's Hospital, just as we did for the Scream stream. Um, Odafest uh, has always been kind of part, uh, not partnered with Dave, but we've always been, uh, Dave's been part of the community for forever, probably since the beginning, essentially. Um, especially on the gamer side of things. And I just wanted to give them a quick shout out. They're doing amazing work. Uh, they're currently at almost 5,000, I want to say, USD. So they have done amazingly and they're just doing speed runs just like AGDQ or SGDQ if you're familiar with those. So go check them out when you can. Just check out Dave's channel too. I'm very happy to give them a shout out and uh, support a good cause. Awesome. Yeah. Just awesome. They are doing some crazy good stuff. Bayfar was doing some hosting for them earlier. Um and so Odafest Podcast is not sponsored by Dave. In Rather, any way, Oda shape, Fest or form. Odafest Podcast supports Dave. Odafest Very supports much. the community. That's the main thing. And Dave has built yeah. an amazing community around his speed run uh abilities and dedication to that. Um, which is the craziest hobby, to be honest, because I have tried speedrunning. I've tried, like, I can do a couple of games, but it's crazy. It's just too much for me to actually keep up. And I play a lot of games. I like, I've, I'm, I'm a gamer. That's my hobby. That's my thing. But it's how, like, I've watched. I can't tell you how many times I've been in Dave's like basement watching him practice, or I'll just be on like watching his stream watching in practice and it's like i'm happy to do it not just because it's friend, my like he's my friend or anything but like just to see the process and like the practice and he goes until his hands hurt man my god so i tuned i tuned in for a little bit yesterday and uh yeah i can't even keep track of when he's menuing i can't see it the, like the menuing is insane like everything in speedrunning, in in general, is insane because it's the menuing, it's the it's the uh, language selection. So like a lot of games will be both in like Japanese, Chinese, uh, like it could be French, Italian, or English and stuff like that. And a lot of the time they'll twist to Japanese just because a they know the game that well. They don't they no longer need to read the text. And b because Japanese uses uh, characters and characters usually express a range of information faster the language is dense yeah denser. it's essentially so that. there's less menus so you so yeah it's fewer menus like less so text. you can save 0. 0.3 seconds and they're like that's a lot My God. They're, like they, they would always like everyone always <laughs> mentions like yo if i can save 0. 0.1 that's a lot and it's like i get it i get it and it's amazing so you guys if people it's, don't watch speed runs you really should they it's a so cumulative cool effect categories. too yeah. It's a cumulative effect too exactly. because if you change to a different language and it's rendering less things all the time for yep. you, then it it accumulates over the playthrough of yep. that game. So definitely um A, something that requires a lot of skill, B, a lot of training, mm -hmm. C, a lot of memory. Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever speedrun a, a visual novel? <laughs> you could be it, Angelo. You could be Angelo, that. Angelo, you should do this. Angelo, I'm not, a, I'm not a visual novel player. Angelo, please speed run through like the best, the the, the I don't know. There's, there's like a an extra super hard ending to get for Long Live the Queen. Oh my god! I need to see you do that one. Oh my! I'll I'll play Long Live the Queen on stream. I love do that it. game, but do I'm it. not gonna <laughs> speed run it. You could that would be so funny. I could. I could. <laughs> Just speedrun the game like a hundred times. The worst part about speedrunning a visual novel, for anyone who's not familiar with visual novels, is that 
sometimes they'll have like branches and choices, but sometimes they do just play straight through and there's nothing else other than dialogue. So I don't know what would have to take place for a visual novel speedrun, whether you would have to do all like you would have to let it play out or you have to have the speed text go through, but then nobody can read it and everyone's just watching a very fast PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> like, like uh, that's it like you know what other, i mean like I think that's too, what, is the, what, it would be. what is the audience experience here do you know what i mean <laughs> so exactly. i i suspect speed running a visual novel can be made much more complicated if your menuing is never consistent because if you don't know that certain things get reordered it will slow you down Potentially, and if you're maybe trying to head oh for, God. if it's like the kind of visual novel that does have choices and decisions to be made, and you're trying to aim for a certain ending for that visual novel, that might be a little bit better. But I don't imagine that it's a good uh, audience experience at all. They will not get the story. Unless they've oh, seen it God, before. No. Like, it would obviously be skewed towards people who've played right. it before, and they just wanted to see a speed run of something. It's, I would, I would be hard pressed to call it much of a speed run it's mostly how fast can one person double click through sc yes through screens <laughs> exactly that's literally but it. that was a frame perfect that was a frame perfect uh a click uh for when the text ended i'm actually so now manipulating the next box of text i'm manipulating the rng into the next scene uh mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like there is no rng there's, there's actually there's actually a tech up here where uh, <laughs> the buttons overlap, and if you press both at once, uh, it brings us into a fail state that <gasps> skips to the next Oh, arc. no, not a fail state. Not a soft lock. But, yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I just... <laughs> it's actually one of my anyway. favorite things. I think I mentioned it before, but I love uh, uh, speedrun terminology and applying it to, like, daily life in mundane situations. <laughs> When have you applied soft lock anywhere else? I want to know. Uh, when I'm getting tired. When you're getting yes. tired. My I think a lot of terminology locking. applies you, for when we're that tired. You need to tuck yourself in to fix the soft I lock do. and reset the system for the next day. Mm -hmm. If you don't, then the next cycle is going to be really tough. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, How long do you anyway, spend speaking... on hobbies? <laughs> I, cause what like, kind of hobbies? I don't know any hobby. I mean, like so, Dave spent. This Dave, is something that I, occurred to me yesterday. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Actually, keep going. I'm gonna check something real quick while you're, while you're going. So yesterday I was streaming uh, some live 2D model rigging, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and in the past I've done this a few times. Like I've made three or four models just for myself, a uh, couple for friends, and. I've always done them during a period of time where I haven't been keeping track of how long I've been spending on them. Right. And so it's like, well, how long did it take to make my current Live 2D model? Mm -hmm. I know that I drew it over the course of several nights. I knew that I rigged it over the course of one or two nights. But how long did I actually spend on those nights doing mm -hmm. it? And so yesterday I had a four-hour stream and maybe... Half an hour of it was me and Dio eating sushi and playing with t having two models going at once. Yeah, having your models on while you were eating sushi was actually really impressive because it actually picked up like you guys were chewing on food. Yeah, I, I was surprised how well it uh, it worked. I was considering that very... I made those models and that was... Uh, <laughs> I am I like strongly I like that, considering man. being a VTuber now after seeing that. <laughs> it was pretty cool. That really, that, and uh, a strong vote of confidence for yourself. I made those models. I didn't think they would. Do I that. made these. <laughs> I didn't think they would work out that well. They and honestly, really the did. the one that I'm making for Dio now is going to be head and shoulders above the rest. It's going to be so cool. But uh, so I spent like almost realistically three and a half hours streaming making this thing, right. and I got maybe twenty five maybe only 20 percent done over those four hours and i was right. just thinking it's like wait how long did i actually spend on the other ones that i made because things are going so smoothly today like everything is working out the way it should mm -hmm. i know i'm not spending that much time just playing around with the eyes and and mouth the way that i have before so it's like how much time have i actually invested in this at this point and i have no idea <laughs> but it, it was having that time stream Knowing, like, yes, I spent 
four hours, this is how far I got. Wait a minute, how much of my life have I spent here? See, <laughs> I don't know, like, in, in a similar vein, but not, like, I, I like I have other projects and other hobbies, but, like, like I said, video gaming is probably my biggest hobby in that, like, it's my stress relief, and it's, like, the thing I do for fun, and I do it with friends, especially during coronavirus, so, because we can't see each other as much and all that stuff, right? I don't know yeah. what my lifetime numbers are, <laughs> but so, Steam okay. alone paints a terrifying picture of how much time... How terrifying. Uh, uh-huh. Like, I'm somewhere in the vein of at least, I don't know, 7,000 to 8,000 hours? Just spent Only? playing Steam games? What about Only games that aren't Steam on Steam? Games. Yeah, well, there's things like board games, and there's things like... GOG that I don't use as much and there's things like my DS and like consoles that I've owned like I could be up to a solid years worth of hours which is a lot of hours is like not, I don't know 8,000 hours? A uh, year is around 8,500 to 9,000 yeah, yeah, hours. Yeah. Nice. So I probably had at least two or three years worth i did that math once like a decade ago eight thousand seven hundred and sixty hours yeah. i i would yes. assume that i've had at least two or three years worth of of gaming time so that's not even counting time i remember a time before steam actually tracked your gameplay stats right? yes i've lost many a game and to rather that. Mm -hmm. so i just knew that uh rather they were tracking it in the background but they didn't make it public i don't believe mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh maybe i'm actually wrong about that i don't know i remember tf2 was two years old and i'd been playing that game like five hours a daily day, we played we played a lot of tf2 and we played a lot of left this was Dead. before i even moved out here yeah. And I remember and getting the orange box suddenly they turned mm. on usage statistics like playtime yep, yep. mm-hmm and I think within a year, hmm. I racked up like fifteen hundred hours. Nice. See, I'm on TF2 I'm alone. I'm in the same nice. boat where I'm. I don't know how, but I only have thirteen hundred hours on TF2, which is statistically improbable in terms of its accuracy. There, I I must have closer to three thousand hours, and I say that I... because I played just as I I got Orange Box the like I played. TFC back in the day, Counter-Strike, like Counter a whole bunch of other stuff back in the day. I got Orange Box on day one, and I also know that I, I stayed with Team Fortress longer than the rest of you guys, like uh, uh, longer than most oh, of my yeah, friends. Oh yeah, you did. I must have closer to 3,000 hours. There's no way I only have 1,300. As far as I go, uh, I think my current profile says I have 800 hours in mm -hmm. it. And that's because at one point I wiped the, uh, the playtime because they allowed me yes. to do that. Because I wanted to hide the shame of having idled in <laughs> damn dirty idle servers. Oh. I wanted to erase the shame from my profile. Whoa. I never idled. That's the worst part. <laughs> I played. I played in like... I, I would also like do trading and stuff. And I played in I, like trading servers and stuff. So like I never idled. I, I only have I 800 I hours in, in GTA. Front of right now. How could I have only 800 hours in GTA? <laughs> only 800 hours. Like, that's such a small feat. That's... I feel like my... <sighs> okay. I feel like my Steam like report, how it says what you've done in the last two weeks, mm -hmm. it used to say I'd be putting in like 40, sometimes 50 hours of video games in a, in a two-week period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, oh, you've played 30 minutes of games right. and... 80, 90, 200 hours of Ace Sprite. Just because I leave <laughs> Ace Sprite open literally all the time. Uh -huh. I have 766 hours in Monster Hunter World. I have 400, <laughs> but only 400 hours in Left 4 Dead 2? That's impossible. <laughs> That's impossible. That's impossible. We have played um, way too much Left 4 Dead 2 for that to be true. <laughs> okay. Question for both of you. What up? If real life had cumulative and even not cumulative statistics on things like this, 
What other stats would you be interested to see about your life? How many skin cells or general shell cells I have lost from my body? Wow. The first thing I thought of, we can't say on the podcast. Okay. How about things you can say on the podcast? Uh, I already said hmm. it. I have, like, really weird ones in mind right now. Like, I wonder how many, like, cumulative hours I've spent sitting on a toilet. I would love to see the breakdown of what foods I've eaten. I wa- Ooh, okay. yeah. So mine was similar. It's like, you've eaten spaghetti how many times? Right. I want, like... A list. I want a chart of like what the, what the food is and break it right. down. Mm-hmm. Like, how many ramen have I pasta, had? How many how many times have you eaten pasta or noodle based? I I and within that breakdown, what kind? I kind of oh, want yeah, the same the same sort of that, but I want it even more granular. So I've thought about it too. When it, like like this is not just a new thing. When you order a sushi boat, for example. I mm. wondered, or if you go for all you can eat, how many individual animals am I eating? So if you order, oh, so, you, <laughs> so you order a salmon, like a salmon thing, right, or the salmon roll or whatever. A salmon roll isn't like always just like f- like a full on slice of fish. It can be from like multiple sort. So like on a sushi boat, there may be even those ten separate items of sushi boat. There could be like fifty different animals that you know are are involved in, oh, the, yeah. in the eating. And Rele- that's the relevant I to want. that. Yeah. Relevant to that, well, it would even be kind of neat to see like across all of the different meals and foods and dishes that I've eaten, how many of those had seaweed in it, and how much was all that seaweed like all right. added up together. Another another way of putting it as well it was like. Uh, for example, you have you've had hamburger and you've had hamburgers from uh, fast food places, especially where they have a lot of processing, which means that one hamburger patty is not probably just from one cow like it would be if you made it from at home or something. It's probably yeah. from several cows. You know? Yep. So it's sort of yep. so Jay. I must ask. And how many insects got into that? How many chickens were sacrificed on your last wings night? Oh, I just had wings recently. <laughs> Nice. It wasn't so for do you a... think it was one wing from like it like it was an well, average of one well, wing you, per Max, chicken? You order ten maximum wings. two wings per chicken. Yeah. If you order <laughs> ten wings, you've you've possibly eaten up to ten up to chicken ten chickens. Items. Uh, up possibly. to ten. Yeah. Minimum five. So that's minimum like... five, but definitely possibly ten. And again, I want to get granular into this. As much as you would like to believe that you may not have ever eaten an insect or like rat meat oh, yeah. or like whatever it Pretty might be, sure. you've probably had small quantities of, of each. So I would love to see that level of granularity, that breakdown in telling me how many different animals I've eaten and how many of each. Like, you know. Oh my God. And it would be terrifying. <laughs> and it's like, you're a monster. And I'd be like, I'm not a monster. I'm just doing my <laughs> biological function in order to survive. <laughs> Although I will say on a somewhat related note, I'm 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 not like saying that I'm I'm 100% like dedicated to it, but I'm trying when I can to eat one vegetarian meal a day to replace That's yeah. cool. It's not like a not like cool. a big like I don't think it's a really big change. To be fair, a bowl of cereal is vegetarian. That is true. Well, that's not. It's got milk. <laughs> Yeah. No, you're talking about vegan, though. No, not necessarily. I guess like, you can no be ovo lacto vegetarian. Milk is. Yeah, milk there's is, like a lot of. Totally vegetarian. You, I could have it with bean milk. <laughs> bean milk. I won't have it bean with juice. bean milk. But like. Bean juice. Sometimes it's just like I'll have something that's like more rice and veggies. Last night, I just had a bowl of grapes and cucumbers. <laughs> Nice. nice. Which, while someone would say that's probably not the healthiest, I liked it, and I was happy Grapes to eat and it. Grapes cucumbers? Who would argue with that? I don't know. But yeah, like I, I'm just trying to... It's. I think it's a healthier diet. I'm not going to judge. I think it's a healthier diet, and I think we do need to think about... Like, I'm never going to give up meat. I'm telling you that right now. But I am going to say that we do need to be a little bit more conscious about food choices. I agree. Oh, yeah. Right. I think it'd be really difficult for me to give up beef, even though I know beef is so bad for the environment. I'm bad oh, yeah. for the environment. <laughs> Same. Do you really put out that much methane? Probably. Yes. Wow. 
Oh, on the on the topic of the the meal thing, uh, I had a I went to a place called V Burger, which is close by to where I am. Their hmm. stuff is pretty good. I would recommend what's trying their it. what's their thing? Is it all vegetarian burgers? I think they're all vegan, but I could be vegetarian only. Yeah. I think it's vegan though. Even I'm pretty better. sure, and they they of course have like gluten free and and lactose free options and stuff like that. Pretty good Very stuff. Nice. But I would recommend nice. it if you are in that like, oh, I don't want to eat like a tofu burger. And I'm like, I also don't want to eat a tofu burger because I grew up on tofu. I love tofu. Don't put it in a burger. Put it in like mapo tofu. But, yeah. you know, leave burgers to be their own thing and make food that resembles that instead. But don't force tofu into something it's not. I just thought of another random stat I'd love to see. Mm -hmm. How many times I've ever cracked each individual knuckle on in my body? Oh no. Or joint, I guess. I want to know but how cool. many individual poop nuggets I've produced. <laughs> <laughs> how long is the total amount of hair you've grown? Ooh, that'd be cool. Ooh, that's probably pretty short for me overall. I don't know. Well, I don't have like, a lot because, of body uh, hair. So I can't even add up that much. Oh, we're talking about all. You the said hair. all the hair. Oh. Just on your you head. You said all the hair. You know, I was I was just thinking on your head, but you yeah, yeah. Hair. You'd have to count your body mm -hmm. hair. Yeah. Wow. If we're gonna track these stats, we might as well track them all to its fullest. <laughs> right. Indeed. Uh, I don't know if you got anything else. Do we have anything else? Uh. You really want to hit on? I heard Mass Effect, the Mass Effect trilogy is getting a remaster. Never played it. I only heard, I heard the first one's kind of crap and the second one and the third one's maybe okay. Or maybe I have it mixed around a little bit. Um, I heard that the third one uh, made the entire trilogy and then Andromeda just ended the trilogy, the, the franchise. Interestingly enough, they hinted, well, no, they didn't hint. They specifically said, we have been thinking about a new episode to add to the Mass Effect line mm. but they didn't say anything beyond that i don't really have anything to add about mass effect because i've never played it but i do know people who are really into it i really enjoyed Same. it because there were some very satisfying moments in there where i went full renegade and i just don't regret them at all but they also mentioned you know it's a remaster so it's going to look a little bit nicer but i think they're also going to rejigger some of the actual gameplay too because mm -hmm. i remember what driving if they vehicles it and just turn it all into uh, mass effect andromeda graphics <laughs> please no i i was told the faces <laughs> in andromeda were awful and then i went and looked up like videos of the playthrough and i was like nope not playing this right right yeah <laughs> no <laughs> So yeah, I've never actually played Andromeda, but mm. it could be good. I didn't give it a fair shot, so I can't say. I heard they fixed it eventually, but that it was never a good game. Oh, that's a shame. But I did like the original trilogy. I would love to play it again. And I think the third one was never released to Steam. I Really? I, I don't think so. Really one weird. and two have been on Steam for ages. Oh, because they would have been on uh, Uplay. Oh, I think disgusting. so. Or something, yeah. Uh, I played the third one on the Xbox, so I would like to be able to play it sans controller for once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, I don't mind. It was it was fine, and it was they were really well done story games. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. Also, the voice acting was really fantastic. Oh, would, the only I thing I have to say is like coming the, from a the aliens look voice cool. acting. That's all I really got though. <laughs> I don't know. For alien designs, I like things that are more out there. Like really uh, out it there? Seems like, well, it's like a lot of almost all alien media just follows the same basic humanoid body plan, if you get me. With with a whole bunch of extra add-ons? Yeah. Or a few things and taken I mean, away? That's fine, and it actually makes you be able to relate better with whatever creature uh, you're coming across. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's all good and fine. I'm not complaining with that. But I mean... When you're talking about just about any kind of method of life, uh, the human body plan is only one of many solutions. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of boring. So it's boring when everything's just uh, just a, a different uh, kind of human. Well, the, the alien design was really interesting because while you do interact with a lot of humanoid type uh, races, there were also the Elcor, which were just out there. 
I don't want to spoil anything, but the Elcor are just out there, and I really enjoyed just any time you come on across some level them. as sentient rocks. <laughs> not not quite that weird. Yeah, Star Star Trek. I think it was. Mm, they had an episode rocks. with sentient rocks. <laughs> okay. Because they were silicon based life forms. Yes. There was also yeah. a tar monster in like the first oh, God, season let's of not TNG. Talk about that. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. But no. anyway, what I'm saying is, is that I can really appreciate like right. really innovative alien design. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, yeah. conversation. And I think that's about where we have to end it off. Mm-hmm. Sounds good to me. I, I think we've exhausted the idea of uh, aliens. So <laughs> I think we've exhausted the, the idea uh, of bootleg pizza. Uh, bootleg yeah. pizza. I think we've totally exhausted right. that. I, Unless I go and actually try the real deep dish, I and do get an update being like, mm hmm. Yeah, we'll I do sure. really want to hear Angelo, Angelo tell us right. what he actually oh, thinks God, of the real, gonna, the real this, deal. This, this plot line's going to extend three episodes? God. Yes. Three All episodes, right. maybe. Maybe. On that note, this is it. We'll catch you next time with more pizza talk. <laughs> Apparently, the Odefest Pizza Cast. Uh, this is Jay signing out. I like it. <laughs> Night, everybody. Bye-bye.